Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for week 11 of the Concentrator Talk brought to you by the Oxygen Alliance. My name is Mwawi Lungu, and I'm currently in Lerongwe, Malawi. I'm pleased to be hosting the Concentrator Talk today. For those that may not be aware, the Concentrator Talk is a virtual meeting that the Oxygen Alliance hosts every Thursday from 2 to 3 p.m. Central African time to discuss different aspects of oxygen concentrator assessment, use, and maintenance. And uh, remember that you can always send questions to us by email to info at oxygenalliance.org, and we'll do our best to respond to the questions during the next session of the concentrator talk. So joining me on the call today are my colleagues, Amapreet Rai and Jerry Douglas. We also have several technicians joining us on the call to answer all your questions today. We have Kowinda Singh joining us from Chandigarh, India. We have Teto Sinjani, Joji Kwanga, Francis Sambani, and Sharon Gozo joining us from Lilongwe, Malawi. So if you have questions that you'd like to ask during the session, uh, you can type them into the chat and we'll do our best to respond to them. Just a reminder to everyone that we ask you to keep your videos turned off and your microphones muted unless you are asking a question. So as usual, we'll also be having a topic of interest today. And today we'll be talking about the specifications of uh, different models of oxygen concentrators. So like we normally do, I will read out uh, each question and ask one of our technicians to respond. So we'll also paste the question in the chat in case you didn't hear it fully. So as usual, we also have pause at the end of some of the questions. So please attend to them when they pop up. All right, so moving on to our questions now. So our first question says, a nurse from a female medical ward reported that an oxygen concentrator that they received through a donation stops running within a minute of being turned on. When I went to check, I found that the oxygen concentrator was a Medris JY102 with a touch screen as shown in the picture. So there was zero, zero hours, zero, three minutes on the timing display. What could be the cause of the problem? I'll ask Francis to take this one up. Thank you, Maui. All right, so this model of an oxygen concentrator uh, has a touch, touch screen as the interface, uh, which one can use to go through the settings, the different settings that it supports. So as you can see on the graphics, you have the running time. So. Uh, that time means to say that that's how long an oxygen, how long this specific oxygen concentrator will run, will run for. So let's say as it is right now, it's set at 49 minutes, uh, yeah, and also it has the minutes and the hours, just so you know. So if if we switch it on right now, it will run for only for nine minutes and then it will go off. So um, if if that means to say that if you want to let it run continuously, you should. Uh, set the hours to zero and the minutes as well to zero for it to run continuously. But as long as you have some minutes or even hours on it, uh, that means that it will continue to run up until the countdown is reached. So you should always check on the timing. If you find that very few minutes are set, adjust it to zero if you want it to run continuously or set a spe specific number of hours or minutes if you want it, if you want the concentrator to run for a specific period. So as always, you should always train your nurses on how to use the concentrator if you find out that they're not familiar with such models of oxygen concentrators. Thanks everyone. Thank you very much, Francis, for that explanation. So if we have any questions from the audience, uh, you can raise your hand and then Francis can answer it. Right, seems we do not have any questions. So we have a poll at uh, this question. So Amapreet, if you can please launch that one up. Yes, the poll is, have you ever worked on a concentrator with a touch screen? Um, I know that's not always the most common um, mode that we find concentrators with. 
And Moa, would you just want to remind everybody um, how to access the polls? Yes. So if you are joining us from your laptop, uh, if you go to the bottom right of your screen, uh, you will find there is an activities button. If you click on that button, uh, a menu window will open and the pause option is one of the listed options. If you are joining us using your mobile phone, uh, hit on your men menus option and then a window will expand where the activities button uh, will be uh, located. So if you click on the activities button, you should be able to see the pause menu from there. Thanks, Maui. And it looks like uh, most people have not worked on um, concentrators with a touch screen. Okay. All right, so moving on uh, with our questions. So the next question says, NS from the children's ward is complaining that when she turns on one of the Dilubis 515 oxygen concentrators found at the ward, the compressor starts but then the service required LED illuminates with no air flowing out of the patient's outlet. What can be the possible cause and how can I fix it? So I'll ask Sharon to take this one up. Thank you, Mari. So compressors take in air from the surrounding and compresses it into separate to where oxygen is filled out and produced at the patient's outlet. So in your case, if the compressor is learning, but there's no air at the patient's outlet, there's a high possibility that there's a leakage along the tubing inside. So the first thing to do is to open up the concentrator by unscrewing its screws to remove the covers, then switch on the concentrator so that you should be able to find where the leakage is. So you will need soapy water to check the leakages. So if you find the source of the leakage, switch the concentrator off and then secure the press where the, there is a leakage by either using horse clips or cable ties. Then switch the concentrator on again to observe its performance before putting back its covers. Try to find the cause of the loosening of the pipes. It can either be due to pressure build up in the airways that might have resulted from the brokerages in the pipes, or it may also be the pipes just loosened due to some movements inside the concentrator. If it was due to pressure build up, you observe that as soon as you secure back the loose pipe, the lip valve will start engaging or the pipe will pop out again. So you need to try to find the point that is broke by first checking if the rotary valve is working properly by observing the movement in the gears. As we can see with the picture, the rotary valve. So if the rotary valve is not rotating or if its speed is slower than the normal speed, that might be the cause. So you need to remove the rotary valve and replace with a new working rotary valve. But if the rotary valve is working perfectly, you're still having, and you're still having the lift valve popping. So you need to check for the leakages by removing one pipe at a time, starting from the outlet of the sieve bed and observing if the valves will still be engaging if your sieve beds are the cause of the brocade. So, if you still have the problem, then you need to, if the problem is still the safe beds, then you need to try changing the zeroite in the beds by putting a new zeroite. But if the beds are not broken, then it might be that one pipe was bent, which was resulting in restrict, restricting the airflow. So you just need to straighten the pipes and then the air has to flow through easily. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sharon, for that explanation. If we have questions from the audience, please raise your hand and uh, they will be answered. If we also have some further comments from the other technicians, please feel free to add on. Yes, Jerry. Yeah, I was noticing in the picture of the rotary valve that it was actually missing a hose clamp on one side of the rotary valve. Yeah. Sharon, do you have anything to say about that? Okay, so the little revive needs to have two horse clamps on both sides so that you don't have any leakages. Thank you. So this was probably missed when it was being fixed, right? Yeah. All right. Okay, so moving on uh, to our next question. 
So the next question says, I'm a technician at the local health center. We have newly installed five liter per minute air safe new life concentrator, which sits locked away from the patient's bed. And the only way to connect the patient is to use an extended tubing, which is increasing blood pressure and limiting oxygen flow to 3.5 liters per minute. The patient bed cannot be moved due to spacing conditions. Is there a way of achieving five liter per minute with the, with the additional tubings? I'll ask Kuwinda to take this one up. Thanks, Bobby. So it is advisable not to use long tubings when delivering oxygen to a patient. However, when an additional length of oxygen tubing with a humidifier is required to get a patient in need of oxygen therapy, so it is necessary to correct the back pressure in order to get the flow of 5 liters uh, per minute. So to do so, uh, turn on the AirSafe New Life uh, concentrator for approximately 3 minutes for pressure buildup. Uh, connect the tubing with the humidifier bottle and turn the flow meter knob until it is fully open. Then adjust the uh, pressure on the pressure regulator by opening the uh, machine from inside. So by pulling the uh, pulling the regulator upwards, then we can increase the pressure by uh, rotating it clockwise until the flow meter ball centers on 5.5 liters per minute. So when this is done, uh, push back the regulator knob to lock it in place and adjust the flow meter clockwise reach a 5 liter per minute flow rate so as uh, which is required by the patient otherwise we can also use a long cannula for this purpose so it can solve the problem thank you thank you very much kuinda for that explanation so if we have some questions from the audience uh, please raise your hands and then uh, they will be answered Okay, since we do not have any questions. So moving on uh, to our next question of the day. So the next question says, I am a nurse at a health center. Last week, we received the VOB5 to 5 oxygen concentrators as a donation for the female's ward. I wanted to administer oxygen therapy to a patient yesterday. When I tried to switch on, I got an alarm and the light went on. Immediately, I switched off to prevent it further. We tried switching it on again and the same thing happened. Does the concentrator have a factory fault? So I'll ask Teto to answer this, please. All right, thank you, Maui. So the Devil Bees 5 to 5 oxygen concentrator contains four indicator lights. So there's one for power, uh, as you can see on the image on the right. Um, and then there's another one for the service required. And the other one is for low oxygen and one one on the far left is for normal oxygen and in addition to that unfortunately you can't see but inside there's an audible alarm so all these are included as part of the patient alert system in case the concentrator has faults so when the devil beats 525 is switched on um all the four indicator lights on the front panel will briefly illuminate momentarily. And after a few seconds, only the power and the normal oxygen lights will remain on. So what you are experiencing with this concentrator is absolutely normal. It does, it does not have any factory fault. So it is supposed to happen every time the concentrator is switched. Is switched and to check if all the all the four indicator lights are on and an audible alarm are functional so when the indicator light illuminate uh, when the indicator lights illuminate or the audible alarm alert sounds other than during the startup itself that means there is a problem that is occurring so 
the following are more like some of the problems. So there might be power failure. So when there's power failure, you're going to see a blinking LED uh, light on the service required and an audible pausing sound. So the another problem could be maybe low flow. So any flow below 0 0.5 liters per minute, you're going to have a continuous LED service required light and audible alert. And another problem might be um, the oxygen, the normal oxygen below uh, 84% to 5%. And with this, you're going to see a yellow low oxygen light. And if the concentration is below 75% to 60%, you're going to see the same yellow oxygen light, but it's going to have a beeping audible alert. And if it's less than 60%, then you're going to see the LED uh, service required light and the beeping um, audible alert. So I think the best is to refer to the specifications for these specific alert settings. So the visible and the audible alerts will activate for approximately 15 minutes in a no power situation. So if the unit is turned on without power or the power is removed later, no alert, uh, no alert will sound for the first 10 seconds. So after that time, the alert will produce an audible pulse every few seconds uh, while the visible alert blinks. So power for this array is provided by a capacitor on the PCB board inside the 525. So when you switch it on, slowly turn the flow meter knob until the flow meter ball is centered on the line next to the appropriate flow rate. And when the flow meter knob is turned clockwise, the flow, the flow will decrease and eventually we will shut off the oxygen flow. And when the knob is turned counterclockwise or anticlockwise, the flow will, will increase. So the unit may require up to like 20 minutes for the oxygen concentration and the flow rate to stabilize. So the flow rate should be monitored and really adjusted if necessary. Yeah, thank you, Maury. Thank you very much, Mteto, for that explanation. Uh, I don't know if we have any questions from the audience on the explanation that he just gave us, or any comments or additional uh, things from uh, fellow technicians. I see we have a hand from Gresham. Go ahead. Gresham, I think your mic is muted. Normally, I just want to the 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 could be working while the the, the motherboard is is not working. So when, when the motherboard is not working, eventually the the people more I had trouble getting that. I don't know if he, um, Ted or you had a clear sound that side. No, I was also struggling, but I think he was trying to add on to what I explained, if I'm not mistaken. I think he was trying to say that um, sometimes the LEDs uh, might not come on because of the board itself, but the concentrator might be working, if I'm not mistaken, that is. Yeah, and also, if you can hear me, 
Oh, yeah. No, you're, you're still, still breaking. breaking up. Maybe you can just type it into the chat and then uh, I can read it out for the audience. Okay. All right, so as we wait for uh, Gretchen to type uh, her comments, I'll just like to uh, send a quick reminder to everyone, especially for those that are just joining us. Um, we meet here every day, uh, Thursday from 2 to 3 p.m. Central African time. So remember that uh, we always encourage you to send questions in advance uh, so that our technicians can have a look at them and uh, bring uh, solid answers to you. Uh, we also encourage you to share with us your email addresses so that we can add you to our mailing list and uh, we can so that we can also keep sending you uh, reminders of uh, our uh, updates from the Oxygen Alliance and the Concentrator Talks. Uh, we also advise you to keep your microphones muted so that at least uh, we don't get any disturbances. All right, so I guess we can move on and then we'll get back to Gretchen once she has pasted her comments in the chat. So our next question says, uh, a patient is using two machines, Platinum 9 and New Life Intensity combined with the Y connector. Should we use a humidifier bottle with both concentrators? I'll ask uh, Kuwinda to take this one up. Thank you, Marvin. In this case, uh, both the machines, one from Invacare that is Platinum 9 and other is the New Life Intensity by Airset for Care Industries. So both the machines are having different pressure outputs. The output pressure of Platinum 9 machine is 9 PSI and the output pressure of uh, New Life Intensity is 20 PSI. So in this case, it is better to use a uh, single humidifier bottle which may be connecting, uh, connected after combining the output of both machines uh, through the Y connector. So this requires two connecting tubes for connection to output of both the oxygen concentrators and one Y connector is required for combination of both the outputs of the concentrators. So one connecting tube for connecting from uh, output of the Y connector to the humidif humidifier bottle. So and one high flow cannula or oxygen ma mask for the supply of oxygen to the patient is required in this case. So it is better if we use this like this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kowinda, for that explanation. Uh, so if we have any questions or comments from the audience, please raise your hand and uh, add on to that. We, hand a, we have a hand from Mama Pri. Thanks, Maui. Um, I just wanted to add on that uh, it seems like we have gotten a lot of questions recently about connecting two concentrators together. And the Sanrai team in India um, during the last uh, COVID wave in April of last year put together a fairly detailed video on how exactly to do the connectors with the specific pieces that are needed. Um, so in our recap email. Um, I will be happy to share that uh, video with everyone because it, it, if you do come across that um, or you're looking to try and set that up, that can be a helpful step-by-step -step guide of how to do that. Great. Thanks for that addition. Um, so we have a poll at uh, this question. Uh, so I'm free if you would please launch that one up. Yes, our poll is our most concentrators that you come across used with a humidifier bottle. And we'll just give it a few seconds while we wait for answers to come in. Okay, it looks um, pretty split. 
very 50 50. So I know humidification has been something that's come up in the past um, and we'll certainly discuss it more on upcoming talks. Thanks, Maui. Thanks, Samofri. So moving on uh, with our questions. So the next question says, I am a biomedical engineer at a hospital in Ashanti region of Ghana. I have eight Kuru made oxygen concentrators, which indicates error one after 25 seconds or more after running. I searched for the service manual nine and the error indicates that the pressure cannot reach the standard pressure. What can I do to resolve this? So I'll ask Francis to take this one up. Thank you, Maui. So um, oxygen concentrators use pressure swing adsorption techniques to provide concentrated oxygen. High pressure is required for the zeolite in the seedbeds to absorb nitrogen from room air. This pressure is generated by the compressor by reducing the volume of the filtered air and delivered and delivering the air in a continuous stream. So uh, the probable causes for the problem you are observing are one not service kits for the compressor, restriction or a kink in the pipes and leakages or might be leakages. So firstly, I recommend that you check for leakages and kinks inside the concentrator itself. Uh, meaning to say you should replace any broken pipes or pipe and also correct any kinks by inserting a, a spring inside the kinked pipes. Uh, the spring will help uh, that the, uh, the pipe doesn't form any kink in it. So if you do not have any leakages or kinks, then the next thing to do would be to check the integrity of the compressor itself. So you should look for the manufacturer's performance chart for the model of the compressor that you have in the oxygen concentrator. And also, uh, so the performance chart itself provides uh, the pressure versus flow readings for a properly functioning compressor. An easy test for you uh, and this compressor might be to connect a pressure gauge on the exhaust of the compressor and then block the relief valve. So, yeah, as you can see on the graphics, we have a hex plug. So you can use that hex plug in, in the first picture on the left, uh, you have the hex plug inserted. Of course, it isn't inserted where the leaf valve was, but that was just for you to see, uh, to see how it can look like when on the compressor. So you have to unscrew the, the leaf valve and then uh, you screw in the hex plug. So that will block the outlet of, of, of where the, uh, the leaf valve was. So, and then you can power on the compressor and read the maximum pressure uh, that, that you have or that is showing on the pressure gauge. And then you should compare the maximum pressure that is at zero flow with, with the one given on by, uh, in the performance chart of the compressor. So if you find out that the pressure value, the pressure value you got is much less than that, of the, uh, that in the performance chart, it means that you should uh, replace your Walnut service kits of the compressor. So, namely, you have uh, sleeves uh, uh, as in components that were out inside the compressor, the service kit. You have the stainless sleeves, you have the caps, you have the o rings or the gaskets. So, it might not be that you need to replace all of them at once, but then it might be that you need to only replace the, the ones that are worn out. So, you can physically check that. And if it is the caps that are worn out and the sleeves, you replace those. And then you can check the output pressure. You can check if the output pressure has, has improved it uh, by reconnecting everything back as it was, uh, as, it, as, as previously discussed above the test that we, uh, we said about. So this should help you, this should help, the, this should help collect the problem if, if the, problem, uh, the problem of low pressure that you were experiencing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Francis, for that explanation. So if we have any additional comments or questions from the audience, please raise your hand and uh, add on to that. I see we have a hand from uh, Abena. Go ahead, please. Okay. I'm the one who asked the question. Yes. So has that answered all your, uh, the questions you had? 
And mm. before before I was employed here, they called someone else to come and assess the problem. And then the person said there is this valve. I've taken pictures of it, and I don't know how to send the pictures to the group so that you guys will see what I'm talking about. So the guy said it's, it looks like a valve. It connects three tubes, one to the um, pump, and then one to the humidifier bottle, and then I don't know where one is. I've taken pictures. So, so the guy said it's the valve which is not making the air pressure get to the device. So you think the issue is with the valve mostly, right? That is what the initial person who did the assessment said. Francis, uh, do you have anything to add on with that additional so I can information? Send, I can send the pictures to the emails I sent the questions to yesterday. Yes, um, please do so. I think it would be better to comment after we see the picture. Okay, okay. Thank you. Amapri, uh, can we get the images on time, maybe, if she can send them now to our email? Yes, we can. Um, we can try and do that. I think Mateo also has something to say. Abena, if you could send them now, um, I can share them. Okay. Um, yeah. so the email I sent the question to yesterday, right? Yes. Okay. So, Maui. Yes, go ahead. Just to point out, I think she also sent uh, uh, the model of the concentrator because in the question, initially, mm -hmm. only okay. had the... Oh, okay, I'm coming. I've seen, I'm sending the pictures. Okay. Go ahead, MT. Yeah, so the, the, the what? The model is KS, S, a KS, S-O-C-H. Dash yes. Yeah. Okay, great. So I think we'll have a look onto that and uh, we'll see if we can answer your question now or if we reserve it for our next talk. Okay, so I opened two of them and I realized that the guy has taken two of those valves out and then some are still there. So I've, I've sent pictures of the ones he has taken the valves out and then the type of valve which is there. So I'm trying to send the pictures. Okay, I've sent them. All right, thanks. Um, while, we, why don't, while I pull those up, why don't we do, um, I'm just waiting for the email to come in, but why don't we do the poll question while we're waiting? Yes, please. Okay, I am launching this poll. Um, the question is, have you come across a Kuru Med concentrator in your experiences? And I will say, I have not seen this one before. So this was a new model for me. And so far, all of the votes are also no. So, Abena, we're really glad we can um, help you figure this one out because it seems like it's a bit more of an unusual um, concentrator model. And then, surprisingly, all the eight um, concentrators are having the same issues. All the eight. Where are you um, located? Where's the where's this hospital? It's at um, it's called Saint Patrick's Hospital of Finso Kumase. Okay, um, and it, sorry, which that's country? of Ghana? It's in Ghana. Okay, okay. Um, so maybe a, a model that's found more commonly in uh, in Ghana then. No, 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 no. Because all the hospitals I've worked in, this is my first time I'm seeing this type of model. Got it. Yeah. So, well, I... Amapri, how about uh, we, uh, reserve this, we reserve this for uh, the next session so that we gather more information on this concentrator? Yes, I think Sharon has a hand, um, and then we can also maybe go back to Gresham's comment in the chat after Sharon speaks. 
Yeah. Okay, I was just trying to Google the model of the concentrator. So I think the open or two guys we have made like something that resembles it. So I think maybe the mechanism inside might be the same. It looks like it's more like a CUV, but the models are different, like the name is different, but it looks like it. Yeah. All right, so I think we'll do a bit more research on that and we'll get back to you, Abena. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, so getting back to the comment uh, Gretchen had, uh, so she has typed out uh, uh, what she was saying. We weren't able to get her clear because of the network. Uh, so it says, in some cases, the LED might not light up, and this could be a problem with the board or the LEDs. So it is important to always make sure that the machine LED light up and advise the users to do as well. I had a case of 1025KS that, was, that had a compressor that, ha that, was, that had a compressor running fine, but not outlet. I'm guessing this is the pressure from the outlet. And eventually, there were some tubes that loosened and made a weasel and scary sounds. Not ideal for the world. So thank you very much, Christian, for your comment. All right. Uh, so moving on now uh, with our session. So we'll take a slight diversion from uh, our questions and we'll jump on to our topic of interest for the day. Um, so today we will be talking about uh, the concentrator specifications and George will take us through it. Thank you, Maui. Uh, many of the times that uh, we classify ocean concentrators in terms of uh, their flow rate, uh, that is uh, five liters per minute, eight liters per minute, uh, 10 liters per minute. But um, today, I would like us uh, to talk more about other specifications uh, beyond uh, flow rate. Uh, these other specifications are also important uh, when uh, you are purchasing an ocean concentrator. Uh, you also uh, try to use an ocean concentrator even uh, when you're doing maintenance on ocean concentrators. So the first specification that I'd like us to talk about is uh, the power requirement. Uh, there are different power requirements for an oxid concentrators. Uh, you have uh, other oxid concentrators that use 220 volts to 240 volts uh, AC. You have others that use 115 volts uh, AC. You also have others that use uh, DC voltage, like 48 volts DC. So you need to be aware of all this information before you uh, you purchase if you, you use and uh, you do maintenance on these uh, machines. On the same, uh, you need to understand about uh, the power consumption of uh, uh, an oxid concentrator because this will have an impact on uh, uh, your electricity bill. So you need to be aware of how much uh, power is consumed by an oxygen concentrator. Another specification is uh, on oxygen delivery. Uh, on oxygen delivery, we mainly talk about uh, um, the flow rate, as uh, all of us know, uh, 5 liters per minute, 10 liters per minute, 8 liters per minute. But uh, the other thing that we have to keep in mind is that uh, on flow rate, uh, if the machine is rated 5 liters per minute, the recommended uh, maximum flow rate is uh, 5 liters per minute. You don't need to increase uh, uh, the, the flow rate. Another thing uh, on the ocean delivery is uh, the outlet pressure. That is uh, uh, how much uh, pressure uh, is coming from that machine. So there's that specification that you have to keep in mind. Another thing is uh, on oxygen uh, uh, purity levels, uh, oxygen percentage. So for instance, a, a five liter model, uh, you have um, uh, between one one liter to five liter per minute, you have 95.6 uh, uh, oxygen, oxygen concentration. But at four liters per minute, you may get uh, slightly lower, say 92%. So you need to, uh, to know all this information. Another thing uh, I've 
to talk about is uh, on alarms. Uh, there are different alarms that uh, are in the machine. So we need to be aware of that. For instance, uh, some concentrators have uh, ferry alarms that uh, alert us uh, when there's a ferry in the power. So we need to be aware of uh, what we need the machine to do for us. Another specification is uh, on the temperature. Uh, this machine uh, of different uh, temperature ranges that they work. So we need to be aware of that. And on that temperature, we are talking about uh, the temperature for storage and uh, the temperature when the, the machine is operating. So that's another specification that you need to be aware of. Another specification is uh, on uh, at what uh, pressure the relief path is being engaged. So we need to uh, be aware of that because uh, when you know that, uh, it's easy when you're troubleshooting a uh, notion concentrator. Another thing is uh, on altitude. Uh, this machine had, uh, uh, performed different in different altitudes, so we need to be aware of uh, at what altitude uh, it will operate well. So for instance, some machine uh, from uh, 0 to 1,500 meters above sea level, they perform well with no uh, we, we, with no degradation or in terms of performance, but uh, when it's uh, 1,500 up to 3,500 meters uh, above sea level, you have uh, issues like uh, concentration being dropped. Another thing, uh, it's uh, on sound levels. Uh, this machine produces different uh, uh, different levels of sound, so you need to be aware of uh, of that. Another important thing on specification is uh, this machine that's supposed to conform to different standards. Uh, I would say mainly even the international uh, standard, the ISO standards. So like uh, the ISO 8359, which is specifically for ocean concentrators. So you need to check all that information on the specification for this machine. Uh, another thing is even on the physical dimensions, uh, this machine come in different uh, dimensions, so you need to be aware of that information. So I'll now talk about uh, uh, specific specifications for different machines. So next slide, please. So this one is uh, a specification for ASAP, New Life Concentrators. Uh, we have uh, a 5-liter model, a 8-liter model, and a 10-liter model. So as you can see, uh, there on uh, oxygen concentration, you see that uh, at uh, one to three liters per minute, you are getting 95.5% uh, to 92% of oxygen purity. But at four liters per minute, you are getting 92% uh, plus minus 3%. So you can see for five liter model uh, um, at ASAP, you have uh, different concentration based on uh, uh, based on the flow rate. So you need to be aware of that specification. Uh, you also have the physical characteristics, the one that I've talked on the dimensions, uh, they have specified there. So you need to be aware depending on where you're going to use uh, uh, your, your, your machine. As you can also see, they have also specified uh, the electrical power, the one that I've talked about, uh, even the alarms and the temperatures. Next slide. Uh, they have also talked about the leaf valve, the one that I've talked about. Like in this case, uh, all the ASF models, 5 liter model, 8 liter model, uh, they're talking about uh, a leaf valve uh, being engaged at 45 PSI. Next slide. Yeah, you can also see they are also talking about uh, the extreme voltages, uh, uh, how the concentrator will perform. So you need to be aware of all this information. Next slide. Uh, they have also talked about um, uh, the dark pressure effect. Uh, this is uh, what they did when they were testing the machine. So as you can see there for five liter model, they're saying at, uh, at five liters per minute, there's uh, uh, the, the, the talk about zero, uh, zero PSI. Next slide. So this is an example of uh, a specification. This is from a DevOps 525 or concentrator. So you can see pretty much the information the same. Next slide. 
Uh, this is another specification uh, from an Eva K housing concentrator. So the information is still the same. Next. Uh, the information here is also the same. This is just an example of uh, a specification that you have to check. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, George, uh, for that explanation. I hope it was clear for everyone. Uh, so if you have any questions or comments that you want to ask George, please raise your hand and then uh, he will answer the questions. All right, since we do not have any questions on that. So uh, back to our questions now. So the next question says, uh, I am a biomedical engineering intern at a certain clinic. And this week I was working on a five liter oxygen concentrator, which after servicing, I ran it for a few minutes and tested its purity using an oxygen analyzer at the flow rate of two liters per minute and the purity was 95.6. After a few seconds, I... Change the flow rate to five liters per minute and check the purity and it was still 95.6. The concentrator was taken to the ward where it was being used on a patient at five liters per minute. After it had been used for about an hour, the low purity alarm was activated and brought back to the workshop. I checked the purity at five liters per minute and found that uh, it has dropped from 95.6 to 82%. What could have caused the drop in purity and how do I prevent this scenario from happening again? Um, so here we had two questions similar to this. So we also had a question from uh, Augustus Gomez, um, something similar to this. So we just answer it as one and uh, hopefully we'll be able to answer your question. So I'll ask Sharon to take this one up. Thank you, Maui. So as it was already said in the, in the topic of interest, Increase in flow rate can affect the purity of a concentrator. For example, if a concentrator is giving out 95.6% purity of oxygen at 2 liters. Can I press it? I think so. So if a concentrator is giving out 95.6 purity at 2 liters per minute, it is not always the case that it will perform the same at a higher flow rate. So in your case, after adjusting the flow meter from 2 liters per minute to 5 liters per minute, you are supposed to wait for the purity to stabilize before measuring the purity for about 2 to 5 minutes. And another thing to take note of, when you're done fixing a concentrator is before taking it the concentrator back to the ward or using it on a patient you need to learn your tests for one to two hours to monitor the performance and the purity of the concentrator during the during the test and after the test so during the test you'll be able to see how the concentrator will perform and sound when taken to the ward, you will also be able to collect minor mistakes you'd have missed when fixing the concentrator so the test should be done at the maximum flow rate of that particular concentrator. So to answer the question from Augustus Gomez, we suggest you start with checking the compressor. You need to find out the maximum pressure it is producing. So you have to get the compressor chart of the model in the long fire concentrator you are working on and compare the pressure you get, that is after measuring the the pressure of your compressor, then you compare it. So if you if the pressure you're getting is less than what is being shown on the chart, we suggest that you need to service the compressor. We hope this answers your question. If it doesn't answer your question, we suggest that you give us more details 
about your program. We just want to know if what was really the program of the course and reader before you worked on it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sharon. Um, I think I saw Augustus in the participants list. So if you have any follow up questions, uh, please uh, come in and then Sharon will answer them. All right, so it seems uh, that was clear. Uh, so now moving on to our final question of uh, the day. So the question says, I am working on a compressor or a long fan J5. I want to replace the overhaul kits as they are worn out. Unfortunately, I am failing to unscrew the cup retainer as the screw is stuck. Is it okay if I use an oil-based lubricant to lubricate the screw? I'll ask Francis to take this one up. Thanks, Maui. Um, So oxygen concentrators uh, use an oil-free compressor to prevent delivering oil fumes to patients who are in need of oxygen therapy as the fumes are hazardous and may hinder the therapy itself. Inhalation of oil mists may cause irritation of the lungs and may lead to chemical pneumonia. And it is also worth knowing that some oils are flammable and one must always avoid the risk of fire. It is not that oxygen itself is flammable, nor does it explode. Uh, however, oxygen will make a fire burn quicker. So never use grease or oil on an oxygen concentrator. At all times, the equipment should be kept away from all flammable equipment, such as oil, grease, aerosols, paints, gasoline, or solvent. Do not use petroleum jelly on an oxygen concentrator. So a solution for your problem would be to use a water-based lubricant instead to help lubricate the screws. Thank you. I think Mwawi is muted. Yeah, um, Tato, it seems like Mwawi is maybe having some um, technical issues, but uh, does anybody have any questions on this or comments on uh, this last question that Francis just answered? Okay. Then uh, I think that is our last question for the day. So we'd like to thank you all for joining us on this week's Concentrator Talk. Remember, we will be meeting here again at the same time next week. And if you have any questions, as many of you have already begun sending them in, so please continue to send them in to us in advance, especially when it's a, a model that we have not seen before. So our email is info at oxygenalliance.org and we will be sure to answer your questions as best as we can. Um, please visit our website, www.oxygenalliance.org to learn more about all of the work that we are doing. Um, we also have a YouTube channel where all of the recordings of our previous concentrator talks are posted, um, including the oxygen talk that we had last week from Peak Scientific that is also loaded there. And please don't forget to subscribe to the channel when you visit. This way, every time we add a new video, you will see it in your feeds. And please be sure to share your contact details with us in the chat so we can add you to the email list and to the calendar invitation. And we can let you know when there are new materials that have been added. Thank you everyone for listening and joining us on this um, concentrator talk. Have a good week and we will see you all next week. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Sorry, I lost connection there for the last few minutes. It's all good. <laughs>